Hey, Joanne, what should a buyer do if their offer is rejected? Mm, cry themselves to sleep? Just kidding. Thanks for joining us. I'm Joanne Toronto. And I'm Tom Matthews. And it is so upsetting when your offer is rejected as a buyer. And, you know, it may be upsetting for the seller too, because they may feel like your offer wasn't what they deserved. Right. So when your offer is rejected, there are a few things to keep in mind. Number one, most important, chin up. Okay. Right. Chin up because there are other great things in your future. So if your offer is rejected, you have, you have a couple of options. One is, is you can say, okay, I know I've made the best offer that I feel good about on this particular property. And I'm okay walking away from it because this doesn't make sense for me at this point in time. Right. So you always have the option to walk Absolutely. away. But let's say, for example, you reconsider and you say, well, I really, really like this house. Maybe there's something that that is in the offer that the seller couldn't couldn't palette, right? So maybe it's not even price. Maybe it's just you have a lease ending and they still need to find a house and the timing doesn't line up. Coming up with creative solutions, right? Absolutely. So what would we do in that scenario? We would want to just sit down. If you really love a home and your first offer is rejected, we want to get into a deep conversation with the selling broker and ask, what are the most important points of the offer or the sale mm -hmm. to the seller? And can we find a compromise that would be a win-win for both parties so that the buyer can secure the home? Now, one thing that Joanne and I always talk about in negotiations is the BATNA, mm -hmm. which is the best alternative to a negotiated agreement. Because there may be a scenario, like Joanne said, your lease is ending, you need to be out of your place in 60 days, and the sellers can't close in 60 days. And there there may not be a way to, to to solve the issue. Right. But if there is a way to solve, maybe you leave your apartment and move in with mom and dad or you couch surf so that you can give that seller more time. Go to a hotel. To get that seller more yeah. time because this house, you just feel like this house, this location, this town is the dream property. Mm -hmm. That's where we have to get creative. That's where our transactional experience and having been in that scenario can really help you. But ultimately, if your offer is rejected, sometimes you just got to walk away. And move on. There's always going to be another home. Right. And what we want people to keep, um, be mindful of is that the home that you're purchasing has to fit your lifestyle for today, tomorrow, and the next 10 to 20 years. And as a seller, when you are rejecting an offer, you want to consider is, the, is, there, is there a middle ground of where you would want to work with this buyer? Right. And if there's not, it's okay to reject an offer. We're never going to pressure somebody to take an offer that's not right for them. And we're also not going to pressure them to make a counter off because that can happen too. But and today we're just talking about what happens when you're just outright rejected. And I wrote an offer this past week where a buyer was outright rejected. And the selling agent said to me, he goes, I pleaded with my seller to make a counter offer, but they wouldn't. And that was okay. But the buyer said, thank you. And I'm going to walk away. And that house is still on the market. So, you know, this is, can be high, high kind of tension, high risk, and you want to, but, but if your offer's rejected, you got to just know what your backup plan is. Right. Thank you so much for joining us this morning. I'm Joanne Toronto. And I'm Tom Matthews. If you like this content, please subscribe and join our videos.